First Peter chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. And I read. The elders which are among you, I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of the sufferings of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Verse 2. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Neither has been lords over God's heritage, but being on samples to the flock. Oh, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that faded not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject to one another. And be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Verse 6. Humble yourselves thereof under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. Verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resisted fast on the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in, in your brethren that are in the world. Verse 10. But the God of all the grace, the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, established, and strengthened settle you. Amen. Amen. And the final verse, to him the glory and dominion forever and ever. Let the saints say amen. amen.
Father, we thank you. We acknowledge you for who you are in our life. And in this ministry, Dan Saki Baba, we give it to you, Lord, because it's your work. It's not by our work. It's by your work. It's by what you've done for us. It's by sending your son to the cross of Calvary to die for our sins and for the redemption that you have redeemed us. Today, Lord, we are benefactors and we are enjoying the grace. Father, Lord, work for us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, I stand before your people. Speak to them through me, Lord. Let your word make impact in their lives. Let your word revive hope in them. Let your vo wo word, O oh God, rekindle your fire inside of them. Help us to achieve and accomplish what only you can help us to achieve. Father, Lord, we give it to you, Lord. And we say thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and for what you will do. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Just to remind us that we are still in our month of testimony and what? And thanksgiving. When we were having the workers' prayer this morning, the minister that was leading the workers' prayer said, Thanksgiving is the peak of prayer. And it is. It is. It is the peak of prayer. It made reference to how Jesus performed the most acclaimed miracle in the scripture of raising Lazarus from the dead. He did it through thanksgiving. And so, if there's anyone that is waiting on the Lord for a miracle in this month, be a man of thanksgiving. Be a woman of thanksgiving. And maybe that's the reason why the Lord sent a message to us last week that throughout this month, we should endeavor to be in his presence. Because he has promised to give every one of us our miracle. And you will not lose your miracle in Jesus' name. I will not lose my miracle in Jesus' name. As a church, we are moving to our next level. And no devil will stop us because God has ordained it in the name of Jesus. So what are we talking about when we talked about grace to perform our testimony and our thanksgiving? We understand that um, there is reward in hard work. There is reward in labor. Everybody goes to work, to work, and to earn. Everybody goes to work, to work, and to be rewarded. So there is reward in labor. The Bible even confirms it. So there is no doubt that for everyone that is working, you expect a reward. And that's the reason why no one will go to work in unemployment. And at the end of the month, if they don't give you your salary in your account, or give it to you by check or whichever way, uh, yeah, there'll be issue. There'll be issue. You will ask questions. Why is my wages? I worked for it. <laughs> Why is my salary? I worked for it. I know of a lady who worked with her Pastor Sarah. That lady, she works well, but please don't pay her one day later than her um, uh, salary date. The whole hell may break loose. <laughs> The whole hell may break loose. She, one hour late. She has called me on one or two occasions when the accountant was late and then they didn't pay on time. Ah, she said, no, 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 no. Everything else is okay. But this one, you know, so and, and I can understand how to calm her down. So don't worry. It's not the fault of the organization. It's the fault of someone else, a third party that we don't really have control over. And then, by God's grace, she was able to calm down. And then, within a couple of hours, she got her page, uh, her paycheck, and she called, and she was so happy and so excited. So it means that we all wait for our reward, and we receive it, and we are joyful. But you know, there are occasions where you don't work, yet you get rewarded, where you have done nothing, where you can't even justify what you are getting. Because you can quantify your labor. You can quantify things you've done. Even if you're a man that you have been doing things for people, you can quantify your good gestures. And when things happen to you, you can say, oh, yeah, well, and you look at things that you have done, and you feel justified. 
But there are times that you look at what you have done in your life and you don't feel you deserve it. You don't feel you worth what has happened to you. That is what God is saying that he wants to do for us this month. The testimony that God said he wants to send to you and I, it's not as a result of your labor. It's not as a result of what you have done for God. It's not as a result of your commitment or your dedication or your prayer. It's not as a result of whatever level of faith that you say you have. Of course, it's good to have faith. Without faith, no man can please God. But they that must come to God must first believe that he is. And that is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So the subject of faith is a fact. Undeniable. We must not doubt it. God expects it. He honors it. But we are talking about the grace that looks beyond your faith. We are talking about the grace of God that looks beyond your human understanding or reasoning. We are talking about grace that do not look at your record to perform. But just look, that grace looks at the mind of God. How God has decided that in this month I will do this. And then he does it. That is the grace we're talking about. And I want to thank God for that grace and I want to pray that you will not miss your testimony. Amen. You will not miss the thanksgiving of this month. Amen. Because the work of grace will perf be performed in your life. In the name of Jesus. I love the word Apostle Paul. I love the, word, the way that he described the grace of God. Apostle Paul described the grace of God in a very amazing way. It struck me. I loved it. I pray to live by it. And that's in, found in 1 Corinthians 15.10. 1 Corinthians 15.10. It says, but when somebody has expressed everything and have said everything and then came to a word and said, but, meaning that, hey, hang on a minute. Hang on, after everything that I've said, after all that I've narrated, after all the experiences I've quoted and stated, but it was not all of those things that have made me who I am. It wasn't all that I've said that has brought me to where I've gotten to in my life. But, thank you Jesus, by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. I labored more than they all, abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. For us in this ministry, in His Friends Christ Tabernacle Church, worldwide, God has ordained it that through the intervention of the power of grace, in this month of August, you and I, we all together will testify and offer quality thanks given to the Almighty God. Grace will speak for you. Grace will work for you. Grace will perform your miracle. Amen. Grace will give you that breakthrough. Amen. Grace will make a way for you. Amen. Grace will give you victory. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Our God is a gracious God. He loves to pray through grace. Grace is one of his major attributes. Most of us know what grace is. However, this month... God wants to have a deeper God wants us to have a deeper understanding of the workings of his grace. The grace of God is deep and infathomable. It is beyond human comprehension. If we try to use human mind to comprehend the grace of God, it will not make sense to us. The general rule of life according to human practices and standards is that you should receive what you deserve. I explained it earlier. 
which is far, which is fear in human reasoning. But the rule and principle of God according to his grace is that he blesses us even when we did not deserve it. That is why one of the definitions of grace is unmerited and undeserving favor of God. One of the definitions of grace is unmerited and undeserving favor of God. Indeed, grace is unmerited and undeserving favor of God. Let's look at how Apostle Peter called him. Apostle Peter, in our scripture reading of this morning, it described God as the God of all grace. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, the God of what? All grace. Do you understand what that means? The God of all grace. Let everybody say that. The God of all grace. One more time. The God of all grace. Do you know what that means? That means God has an inexhaustible supply of good gifts which are adequate for every conceivable need and which are available to all who will receive them regardless of their performance. Glory to God. Which will make them to receive them regardless of their performance. Grace is the very essence of God's nature. Our God loves to give. He's a giver. God is an addicted giver. As a matter of fact, the nature of God is he looks out for somebody that he can give to to show his power and his might. We, we, we don't understand the nature of God. God does not wait for you to request. Even though he says, ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened. For whosoever asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth to him that knocketh the door will be opened. But with that, inside the heart of God, inside the spirit of God, is a place where God is looking for people that he can show his might. So when you don't receive a miracle, it's not because God has not, he doesn't have the power. Not because God is not, doesn't want to do it. But you know what? Sometimes the, the, your life creates a barrier between you and God. Your life creates a barrier. One major thing God is looking for to release his blessing into the life of his people is obedience. That's why Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 says, And if thou shalt hearken diligently unto what? The voice of the Lord your God and to do all that he has commanded. These blessings will what? We follow you and overtake you. They will not just, you no not need to look for them. You no not need to look for them. I told them in Nigeria, when I went to Nigeria for, you know, two weeks, three weeks ago, when we were having leadership workshop there. I said, I don't, I don't pray for protection. I don't. I don't pray for protection. I don't. I live a life that will attract protection. I live a life that will attract protection. Meditate on that Deuteronomy 28 1. If thou shalt hack him diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to do and to obey all that is commanded. This blessing shall what? Shall pursue you and overtake you. You are not going to look for those blessings. You live a life that will attract those blessings and automatically those blessings will run after you and you pursue you. In the past few weeks, God has been dealing with me on another level of breakthrough. How to position yourself 
for major blessings without asking for blessings. How to position yourself for major blessing without asking for blessing? When they say to us, come to church, one of the things that they are trying to encourage you to do is to position yourself in the place of blessing where you will not need to ask but it can be dropped on you. Church is one of them. Church is one of them. It's a place where God has made a covenant with his people that I will meet you in my presence. I will answer you in my presence. Church is one of them. It's a place where you can position yourself. If you know how to position yourself in the church, you will not need to ask. You will come. You will just worship. Just worship. Just worship. And as you worship, you lift up your hands. Holy hands. I tell you, your worship will, is like a magnet. You begin to search the areas of need in your life. Automatically, a scale of price friends will quickly be drawn in the spirit realm. The ones that are most needed right now because it's not every blessings that is good for you at a particular time. Some blessings may need to wait so that it will not destroy you. But the one that is relevant, that is most needed now, a scale of preference will be prepared and the angels of God will release it. The ones that will wait, will wait. They will still come. It's an auto system. Auto system. Look, God has inexhaustible resources. He doesn't need them. He does not need them. He's looking for someone he can find worthy to demonstrate his power through that person. Some, some of these unbelievers outside in the world, they are using the principles of God through the Bible for their breakthroughs in life. Because that principle is universal. It's universal. So the question you should be asking yourself, if your blessings has been delayed and you have been waiting on the Lord and you have been saying, Lord, how long? Search your life. How are you positioned? How are you positioned? How are you positioned? When Mommy Adak told me about the court case that they want to go, I went to the Lord in prayer and I was praying. I saw a complication in that case. I saw a problem, a complication, a problem. And I spoke a word. I spoke a word. I just speak that word. And I told her, I said, Mommy, you are going. If God be for you, no one will be against you. You are going, you'll come back with testimony. I nearly couldn't have faith because I saw a complication. I saw a complication. I saw a problem. The case was going to turn against them. And I spoke a word. God has been dealing with me in the last few months in an amazing way. I was speaking with Pastor Tom Owo four days ago. The Holy Spirit put some things in my spirit. And the Holy Spirit put that same thing in her spirit. So when I shared it with her, she screamed. She said, the Lord put it in my spirit. I don't know how to tell you because it's too big. I said, don't matter. Anything the Lord puts in your heart, in your spirit, tell me. I was not sharing things with her on Thursday. That thing that the Lord put in her spirit and in my spirit that I've done it. I said, oh, glory be to God. It's going to be to a next level greatness. I said, amen. Said as we are praying, he said, Pastor, hold on there. Do you know that there are two types of prophets? I said, Yes, I know. Said, What are they? 
He said, a seen prophet and a speaking prophet. A seen prophet will see vision, see revelation, see and draw things from the realm of the spirit. But a speaking prophet does not need to see anything. He speaks with authority. And his word is prophetic. He said, Pastor, do you know you are a speaking prophet? I would lie if I told her I didn't know. I would lie. Because I knew. I knew. There was a case in Nigeria. The request that I put on church WhatsApp to help that sister. The husband did something that was wrong. But you know God is the God of all mercy. So they put him in prison. And the sister was left with three children on her own. Nobody to help. She has been praying and fasting. She has leaned terribly. She's, she's dropped from like 80 kg. She's now like 55 kg. She's leaned badly. So when the case first started, she called me. I was a bit annoyed. At, Why would you do that? It's wrong, terrible. So I didn't, I didn't put my mind on it. After the Lord said, no, start praying for her. I saw. So I started so when I was in Nigeria, the man had already agreed that they would take the land that they have and then use it as to pay off what the man, the husband was owing him, and then they would withdraw the case. But the day before they signed the document prepared by the lawyers, he changed his mind that, no, I don't want that document anymore. I want you to go and sell the land and bring me my money. And it's not easy to sell land in Nigeria. It takes a long, a long time. So it means that that man may be in the prison for another several months. He's already been there for six months by then. So he came running to me and said, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. I said, what? He said, that man has changed his mind. He said that he's not going to agree anymore. He wants the money in cash. We should go and sell the land. I said, is that what he said? He said, yes, that's what he said. I looked down. As I looked up, I said, sister, listen to me. She said, yes, sir. I said, that man... For the next 10 days, he will call you back and said, you should come and sign now that he has agreed to, give, to, to accept the land and release your husband. Ah, he said, am I sure? I said, that's what's going to happen. Sister went away. I was still in Nigeria. Eight days later, she called me. She said, daddy, daddy, the man has just called that I should come, that he's not going to accept it, that he's going to sign, and he wants to release the man within eight days. So the spoken word became reality. And now the lawyers have just prepared all the documents now. It's just to pay the legal fee and then they'll release the husband from prison after saying seven months in prison. You can build yourself to any level you want in your life with God. The way of God is different from the way of man. Man may discriminate, may look with eyes and say, oh, if, if I'm to be deciding a lot of things, I will give 95% things to Mommy Hada because I just love her. She's my favorite. She may not know. But Jesus does not do that. God doesn't do that. He gives to every one of you according to the nature of your faith and belief in him. How you want it from him. That's the reason why I told Abraham, as far as you can see, what can you see? It's what you can see. So the same with you. What can you see for yourself this month? How many testimonies are you writing down for yourself this month? What do you see for yourself? I know what I see for myself. And nothing will change my mind from it. The way to receive and break through is when you believe. You lock yourself with that thing that you believe. So that even when you are to be killed, you will die with what you believe. That's what happened to Stephen, the first martyr. They told him, look, we will stone you to death, young man. Denounce this stupid thing you are preaching. Stephen said, No. I know who I've believed. And I'm persuaded. He locked his life with it. 
when they start to stone Stephen, Stephen was not feeling any physical pain. They were stoning his body, but his body has been changed to a mortal body. All those stones were just coming like paper. He was seeing heaven. He said he saw the Son of God stood up, standing ovation, waiting for him. God decided to take Stephen at that time. I want to believe, I'm not sure, this is my belief, that one of the things that changed Paul was the death of Stephen at that time. Because Stephen was the last person, Christian, that Paul was connected to, to torture to death before his conversion on the way to Damascus. Paul, God wanted to hit him with something that he cannot recover from. And if it is to call his saint home through one of his afflictions, then God will do it. To be able to change a soul. Why did God not allow Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to die in the fire? Why did God not allow Daniel to die in the lion's den? Why did God not allow Joseph to be killed by his brothers? He was put in the pit. They brought him out again. So to the Midianites, he sold him to Pharaoh. They told lies against him, found himself in prison. God went with him. From prison, he became the prime minister. Why did he not die in the process? God could have saved Stephen. I believe that was for the conversion of Paul that Stephen was allowed to come home. And that was the last affliction that Paul did before his conversion. That is, the ways of God are different from the ways of man. So I ask you this morning, how big is your faith? How big is your faith? One of the biggest things you have in life to be able to fight the kingdom of darkness, to be able to release your blessings, to be able to break through in life is your faith. How big is your faith? How big is your faith? How big is your faith? Enough of mediocrity. Enough of making yourself look small. Enough of making yourself look intangible. You are more than tangible. You are more than able. Twelve spies were sent to the land. Then saw them themselves in, uh, incapable. And they ended up being incapable. Two who saw what the ten saw. But changed their mindset and said, no, we are more than able. They are the only one that got through that promised land. The rest of the ten died in the wilderness. Because their faith was little. That faith could not carry them through. How big is your faith? How big is your faith? How big is your faith? It was grace that made Jesus, who is God himself, to relinquish heaven's riches and enter at histories in poverty to provide hopeless sinners with the riches of eternal salvation. We don't understand this scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at what that grace did. That though he was rich, yet for your sakes, for your sakes, for my sake, he became poor. That ye through his poverty might be rich. Jesus left the riches in heaven, came to this world. He relinquished every power he had in heaven. All the authority and entitlement, his riches and wealth, everything he left them. He came for you and I. He made himself to become poor. He made himself to become irrelevant. People that 
that he could is 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 um is his air that he can blow can destroy. They started to mock him. He accepted for your sake. They spat at him. He accepted for your sake. They ridiculed him. He accepted for your sake. They made a jest of him. He accepted for your sake. He was hung on that tree. They told him, if you are the son of God, come down. He could call 10,000 of angels to destroy all these people. But he didn't for your sake. Now he suffered all of these things. He has, he has he's, he's, he's received the power for your sake. And now you are still suffering for what he has already gotten for you. You are still suffering for what he has. It's almost like I bought something for you and I gave it to you. And you had it in your house. And you are suffering for the thing that I have given you for free. It's there in your house. Wealth is your heritage. Greatness is your heritage. Healing is your heritage. Victory is your heritage. Elevation is your heritage. It's not for the people of the world. It's for the sons of God. How come you continue to live in abject poverty? How come you continue to live in, in, a, in a hopeless state? It's time to wake up. Let something arise in you. Let something wake up in you. That faith that has died inside of you, let it wake up. Your belief that has reduced, wake it up. Hope that has gone, let it come back. Many of you don't know that you are giants. I thank God for what God is doing in this ministry. Sister Biodu is a new line of testimony in my life. Over a year ago, the devil wanted to create a big barrier between me and her. But I used godly wisdom, patience and love to approach it. And because of that, I was able to help her and recover her. Today, she's riding at the realm of God. God is using her mightily. Mightily. If I had gotten it wrong then and fought with her and get angry, I will have lost. Calm down when there is a problem. Take it easy. Don't use human judgment. Use godly wisdom, patience, and love. Dr. Eman talked about when she used to be late. I used to really call her, call her, call her. But I apply patience, love, godly wisdom. Today, God is using her. These are people God is using in the prophetic ministry in this story. You don't know what is happening behind the scene. Something is happening, brothers and sisters. Good things, not bad things. God of God is prophets behind the scene. Working for you, you may not know. They are there. They are there. And God has opened my eyes to see them. And I'm nurturing them well. I'm praying for them. And they are growing. They are growing. So if you're a member of this church and you are still going somewhere else, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time. There is God here. The power of God is here. The Holy Ghost is here. Miracles are happening here. I am a living miracle. If the power of God is not here, I will not be standing before you. You know it. They cornered me up. They want to finish me without any way to of escape. You know it. You know it. 
But God came through for me. The fact that you are seeing me today and I have not lost any, any inch of my hope and faith in God is because the enemy does not have power. Every power is in the hands of Jesus. So I want to encourage you. In this month, obey. If you have not given your life to Christ, give your life to Christ. If you are not committed to doing something for God, commit to do something for God. God will make a way for you. God will work it out for you. Your miracle will be released into your hands. This month you will testify. This month you will give thanksgiving. Rise up to your feet and begin to pray. Say, Father, give me the grace to have testimony this month. Give me the grace to give thanksgiving. Begin to pray up your mother and pray. 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 Say, Lord, help me this month. 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 In the name of Jesus. Up your mother and pray. Up your mother and pray. Say, Father, help me this month. Father, help me this month. Give me my testimony. Help me to have thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, help me this month. Give me my testimony. Help me to give thanks. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We exalt you. We magnify your name. We glorify you. We praise you. Blessed be your name, O Lord. Father, I thank you for the testimony of your children. Thank you for the thanksgiving. Thank you for their miracles. Thank you for their victories. Thank you for their breakthroughs. Thank you for how you have moved them. Blessed be your name, O Lord. I give you glory, honor, adoration, and praise. Receive our thanks and praises, O Lord. In the name of Jesus. As we go out this week, we declare that we step into our testimony. We step into our breakthrough. We step into our victory. We step into our prosperity. We step into our wealth. We step into our elevation. We step into our healing. We step into our blessings. In the name of Jesus, continue to be our God now and forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Celebrate Jesus.